But right now, I'm just so happy to receive our first guest of the season. This is amazing. He is an award-winning writer and researcher, futurist, and foresight practitioner. I am delighted to receive Dr. Kenneth Sa, popularly known as Sa Mala. Good morning. Good morning, Patsy. How are you doing? I'm great, and you? Doing fantastic. Just knowing that you're here to kickstart the school year, kickstart the season of Cameron Feeling with your wealth of knowledge, I must tell Cameronian something about you. He maintained prize-winning first position in class from Form 1 to Upper Sith. And that was in GSS Mbesa and Cass Bambili. He was a class prefect from primary to secondary school. This is excellence right here. Now, for people watching this morning, parents and their children, what is the recipe to such success in school? I, I don't think there is anything other than hard work, mm -hmm. dedication, respect to one's parents, one's teachers, yeah, and also a good dose of prayer for those who pray. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, Can I, I repeat, hard work, dedication, commitment, respect, respect to who to parents and teachers, to everyone, to elders in the community, because we are in Cameroon, in Africa, yes. and we know that a child is not raised by one person or only the parents, a child yeah. is raised by the community. So I think that once we put this to work, there is no magic about education. Mm, I love that. There's no magic about education. But sincerely, sir, I'm sure you were not loved by all of your classmates for always topping. How did you deal with that peer pressure of people expecting you to get down to their level because you're shining so bright? I'm sure it happened. <laughs> I think that always happens, but it might not have played out in ways that were so scary. Okay. Yeah, but I also think that I was always very friendly with everybody and most of the people were friendly with me and... That's, that's all. Okay. Yeah. So it's also just being a social person, even when you, you have a quest for excellence. I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Because after everything, we are human. And human. what does it matter? With certificates, degrees, titles, they don't matter. Mm -hmm. If I fall here, I need party to take me rush to the hospital. Not a certificate. Although the doctor may need a certificate to, to work on me. <laughs> okay. People skills, extremely important. But you're here to talk about the summit of the future future generations and futures of the Congo Basin. I really want you to break down what this summit is all about, what it represents. The summit of the future has been described by UN Secretary General um, as a, a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity. Yeah. And it's um, <clears throat> a first time event organized by the UN and member states and other stakeholders to revamp multilateralism. And particularly because it has been uh, uh, agreed upon that most of the complex challenges that the world is facing today, whether they're the climate or biodiversity crisis, yeah. geopolitical tensions, or the risk posed by AI and other forms of technology, all of these issues, some of them stem from too much of short-term thinking. Mm. So the UN and member states think that it is important upon the request of the Secretary General that the world comes together and reflect on how do we go forward? How do we think long term? How do we just don't look beyond our noses? Yeah. And to do so, we need to embrace foresight and future thinking. And so the summit is going to give birth to three important policy outcomes, which is one of them is a pact for the future. Okay. That's the overall document, and then the other one is going to be the Declaration on Future Generations, and then the third one is going to be the Global Digital Compact, which is about how, in short, to regulate uh, AI, but also how to bridge digital gaps, etc. Okay. So how is this different from development goals? Good. So one of the objectives is to see how we can speed up, because now it's been realized that we are running behind mm -hmm nearly all the SDGs. And again, that's also some kind of short-term thinking because uh, even now as we are talking, because you, you realize that in the UN Summit of the Future, a, a lot of reference is being made to uh, the, the, the SDGs, but we are about five years away from yes. the Agenda 2030 yes. deadline. So it means that it's also an opportunity for us to reflect on what comes after the SDGs and where did we go wrong with the SDGs and how can we improve? 
Okay, so who will be a part of this conversation on the future? Everyone is on board. Okay. Member states, high-level personalities, even you and me, okay. educators, civil society, mm -hmm. local uh, or sub-national entities, yes. and yeah, you can name the rest, institutions for research, everyone, like virtually, just literally, everyone is supposed to be on board. There's going to be a pre-summit before the summit itself. Tell us how this is structured. So the pre-summit is important because, you know, uh, Cameroon is a very lucky country. Yeah. Uh, we have a, something that the Secretary General Antonio Guterres has described as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And it also comes with a kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for our country because the President of the General Assembly, who will be presiding over that event, is going to be His Excellency Philemon Yang, former Prime Minister of Cameroon. Yeah. And so it's important. The government has judged it important and other partners organizations that uh, Cameroon makes a pre-consultation okay. to make the Cameroonian voice heard, but also to show support and to show how committed we are to working with not only realizing the goals of the summit, but most importantly, but also making sure that the outcomes are implemented. All right. So the pre-summit takes place from the 12th? Yes. To? The 14th. Okay. Of September. Yeah. All right. Where is this? Where is this happening? This is happening uh, mm -hmm. in Cameroon at MinREx, the Ministry okay. of External Relations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there will be uh, brainstorming sessions. Yes. And then also sporting activities. Yeah. So there will be panels, keynotes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then uh, thereafter there will be a sporting events because the, the idea is to make consultations to um, sample opinions of different stakeholders. Yeah. Researchers as I am, or futurists, foresight practitioners, or um, educators, or civil society, or political actors, okay. et cetera, et cetera, and international partners, a UN system, diplomatic missions, but particularly to say, what is the voice of Cameroon and Africa on mm -hmm. these issues? What do we expect? What do we want? Yes. And then the summit itself takes place on the 22nd. Yes, from the 22nd to the 23rd. Still in Cameroon? No. Where? In New York. In New York. Yeah, the summit is in New York. And uh, before the summit itself, there will also be what is called uh, the action day. So the action days are like side events mm -hmm. Yeah, that precede, uh, that come before the, the summit itself. What are these action days about? So the action days is actually an opportunity for stakeholders to again engage with the process and try to uh, influence it. Okay. to make the voices heard or showcase what they've been doing prior to the, to, to the summit, so including perhaps also what Cameroon uh, okay. would, be, would have been doing. Yeah. It's amazing. Sustainable development and well-being for current and future generations, the summit of the future we are anticipating. We are anticipating. Okay, maybe I should let you give a final word to Cameroonians on their, on their understanding of this summit and why it's relevant that they get more informed if they're supposed to. The summit is an opportunity, particularly because it uh, emphasizes the importance of foresight and future thinking. Yeah. And, and this is something that builds on collective intelligence. And this is also something that this is something that makes us understand that everybody is intelligent in one way or the other, mm. and that if we put ourselves in a in a room and we contribute ideas, trying to shape the future, because foresight and future is all about how to navigate the uncertainties mm. of the future, so we can build collective visions and imaginaries of what we want to become as individuals, as local communities, as nations, as continents, as the world, and we can work towards realizing what we have, maybe let's call it preferred futures, or we walk away, we try to avoid going to catastrophic or undesirable futures, to use exact terms in the field. And talking about futures, you've written quite a number of books. Um, my personal favorite is a 2022 Andolo, The Talented Boy with Albinism. 2020's Little Gabriel starts to read. Now, Little Gabriel's story, just briefly, because we have to continue with the show. What's yeah. Little Gabriel's story? Yeah, Little Gabriel, um, because children nowadays a lot, uh, like a lot to stay on their phones and mm -hmm. watch games and mm -hmm. watch stuff, and, and then they're forgetting to read physically. Yes. Yeah, so, and so it's a book that encourages kids to read their books. Okay. Yeah. All right, it's life-changing. Reading has transformed him to who he is today, Samala. Thank you so much for passing by. Thank you, and...
just before I go, another sure. important thing, just briefly, is that the, the futures of the Congo Basin, mm -hmm. which is uh, the most well, one of the most important biodiversity hotspots on the uh, Earth, uh, I've also recently did some research on that, and that is also continuing to weave into the work that we are doing in the pre-consultations. Yeah. Yeah, because it's important for our biodiversity, for mitigating climate change, but also for our cultural biodiversity so in Cameroon, in Gabon, in the two Congos, in the Central African Republic, and etc. All right. Big thank you for passing by, Dr. Kenneth Sa, popularly yeah. known as Sa Mala. Thank Please you. stay with us, because I'm sure you'll be intrigued with our next guests.